Yeah, I've just returned from uh, the honeymoon site in uh, South Australia where we hosted two plane loads of investors and uh, brokers. The analysts have written their reports and really pleasing to see the buy recommendations from Canaccord, Macquarie and Bell Potter. We walked them through the well field development where 34 wells have actually been drilled now and cased and also walk over the iron exchange plant and the actual processing facility. Also to look at the camp, we now have 80 rooms completed, fully refurnished. So at the moment, we're on time and on budget to complete the upgrades and be in production by fourth quarter next year. Feedback was really positive. What really struck the most was uh, not only is the plant itself in fantastic condition, it's been held in active care and maintenance since shutdown in 2014, but they were blown away by the fact that ISR mining is a really low impact on the ground as a form of mining. So from an ESG perspective, it's a very friendly method of mining. So essentially what we're doing with the restart of the Honeymoon Project are four key areas. The first being the well field. Secondly, the water treatment plant. Thirdly, we're switching from solvent extraction to iron exchange. And finally, we're putting two new high temperature kilns in such that we can calcine our product to a higher grade U308. The first component of that being the well fields, we've actually drilled and cased 34 wells of the planned 86. The priority that we're focusing on is getting high grade uranium out of the well fields and to date we're introducing new modern techniques of well field construction. From a budgeting perspective, we're on target. So far we've committed 14% of our capex spend of 113 million. That's in line with our feasibility and front end engineering design studies that were publicly released in March of this year. So it's a terrific outcome. We don't have any debt. There's no debt whatsoever. We were equity funded and when we saw that window of opportunity back in March of this year, we raised 125 million. And it's really where hard work meets opportunity. We now in cash, we have 127 million in our balance sheet. That capex again, 113. And to back that up, we have physical inventory of 1.25 million pounds, valued at approximately $100 million. So we're well funded. It's a very strong balance sheet to see this project come through into production. The timing of our approach to get Honeymoon back into production was really, we want to be there at the start of the new cycle. So it's no use coming in midway through or towards an end of a cycle. We're prepared. We want to be there when the price starts to rise and to help that, we are in discussions with a number of fuel buyers around the world, but we're taking our time. We're waiting for that price to increase and we're negotiating on the basis of market-related contracts that gives us the platform to really move with a rising market. There will be a floor and a ceiling to those contracts, but at the end of the day, it's correlated to the spot price. So as the spot price begins to rise and we deliver into that period, we'll be able to take advantage of those higher prices. Honeymoon's first mover advantage is really clear. We've got our strong equity funding. It's a relatively low capex to restart. We also have our strategic inventory of 1.25 million pounds to give us that strong negotiating capability when entering into new contracts. We're really well positioned to take advantage of the start of this new cycle. We're in such a unique industry. For the last 10 years, that basically a lot of talent has been taken out of this industry due to the low commodity prices. But where we are, we've been able to harness a very strong management and executive team. This is the team to take you forward. Experience counts with Uranium Operations. We've managed to retain some of the best talent available in Australia and overseas. How do you get the likes of Sashi Davies and Wyatt Buck to join the company? They really want to be part of one of Australia's next uranium producers and one of the first globally to come back into the world and also play a leading part in mitigating climate change and being part of the energy solution. Over the course of the following year, we're going to keep providing updates on our construction as we get closer to production. And we're also going to be providing updates on actual exploration activities. We're now looking outside of the mining license and focusing on the satellite deposits 36 million pounds held on two satellite deposits known as Gouldstam and Jason. So very exciting potential to extending the mine life and increasing our production throughput. So a lot of activity to take place over the forthcoming 12 months and look forward to keeping shareholders and investors informed.